Hi, scientists. Now that you've gotten very good with your scientific method, we are gonna move on to our next unit in science and you're gonna love it. It's Earth and space. So today we're gonna learn about telescopes. Do you have a telescope at home? Have you ever looked through a telescope before? Well, we're gonna learn about telescopes today. Okay. So first, we're gonna read a little bit about telescopes. Make it bigger so we can all see. It says, today we're just gonna be reading for right now. People have been interested in studying space since ancient times. Ancient means old. It was possible to see only some stars and planets with the naked eye. That, <laughs> no, stop now. What that means is you could only see some stars and planets with your plain eye, okay? Since they were far, far away, it was possible to see anything in detail. It was impossible to see anything in very much detail. In 1609, think about how many years that was. Like over 400 years ago. An astronomer named Galileo. Now when you see this, these brackets, that's how to pronounce his name, Galileo created a telescope that he used to observe the night sky. Galileo's telescope made things appear three times bigger, larger. Using his telescope, he discovered four of the many moons that orbit the planet Jupiter. He also observed the planet Saturn and the Milky Way. And this is what Galileo looked like. Now, 400 years ago, they didn't have cameras, so people would have to paint. So this is a portrait of him and he's holding a telescope. I don't know why back then a lot of people didn't smile on portraits. Okay, so that's Galileo. Since Galileo's times, scientists have created more and more powerful telescopes. Some telescopes are housed in large observatories on Earth. Often these observatories are on the top of mountains far away from cities or lights. This allows astronomers to clearly see stars and planets. These are an observatory on the top of a mountain to help get a better view from the sky. So it's like a, sp um, a spot opens up here, almost like doors opening up and the telescope will stick out when they're ready to use it. Other astronomers, other telescopes, excuse me, are launched into space using rockets. They travel far above Earth and have a better view of the universe than telescopes on Earth. One of these telescopes is the Hubble telescope. It was launched in 1990, so that's 30 years ago, by NASA, the American group of scientists who study outer space. The Hubble telescope is still in space today. That's 30 years orbiting Earth. So it's going around Earth. Since its launch, it has sent back thousands of photos to NASA. Hubble's photos have led to many new discoveries about the universe. For example, using photos from Hubble, scientists now think that the universe is about 13 to 14 billion years old. And this is a photograph of the Hubble telescope. So when you finish your lessons, if you want to keep learning, you can always Google Hubble telescope and that's on your page to get some information and you can see some amazing pictures from space. Okay, right now we're going to watch a little PowerPoint on how a telescope works. if I can get my computer to work. Again, technical difficulties. That's not it, here we go. How does a telescope work? What is a telescope? A telescope is an amazing device that has the ability to make faraway objects appear closer. 
It is used by astronomers to seek out new planets, new stars, new galaxies, and do other research about the universe. Some of you might have one at home. Bennett used to have one when he was a little boy, and um, or even binoculars, but those are for shorter distances and they're smaller. But some of you might have one of these at home. And if you do, go out and look at the stars tonight. Planet, star, galaxy. So those are some of the things you can see with a telescope. Who invented the first telescope? We just read that Galileo did, but the lens maker in 1608, Hans Lippershe, invented it. And then we know about Galileo. After his invention, the scientist named Galileo used his design in 1609. So it's almost like they worked together. With the invention of this amazing instrument, our knowledge of the universe has grown. Remember, we just learned 13 to 14 billion years old. The reflector telescope is basically a long tube with magnifying lenses at both ends. Magnifying means bigger. At the far end of the telescope, a concave, concave means curved inward, okay, curved inward. Lens called objective lens, which draws in the light and focuses it on one point. So there's the concave lens, it curves in. And the eyepiece, has a convex lens which curves out and magnifies the tiny point. The distance between the two sets of lenses can be changed to focus on the image and make it clear. What actually happens when you put a telescope to your eye is this light from the outside hits the far lens along with the image you are looking at. So confusing and complicated, right? As this light passes through the tube and hits the lens nearest to your eye, the image is magnified so that it takes up more space on your retina. Retina is part of your eye. This makes the object appear larger and closer. So a lot to figure out to invent. Here we have our Hubble telescope that we just learned about. Did you know that stars twinkle because the path of light from the stars is obstructed by so many things, including our atmosphere? Obstructed means blocked. So that light from stars is blocked by so many things. Without it, you would be able to observe distant galaxies perfectly. Cool. In 1990, we just learned that, with the help of a space shuttle known as the Discovery, the Hubble Space Telescope has sent to, the, to outer space. It was positioned in Earth's lower orbit so it could take detailed photographs of Earth and deep space around. There have been four different missions sent to do maintenance and repairs on this modern marble that has allowed us to see the wonderful planet we live on from afar. There it is in space. Remember how old is it? 30 years. The Hubble telescope has given us some of the most amazing pictures of space. Find images of the following deep space events used by an internet search engine. So these are some things that you could research if you're interested in learning more or even just looking at pictures and images. The heart of the Milky Way, the pillars of creation, the mystic mountain of the Carina Nebula. That sounds like it would be pretty cool. Okay. So next, we are going to work on this page. So if you can print it, print it. If you can't, you can just pull it up on your computer and follow along.